I was truly living in a completely different reality than the person I was married to. The exact words out of his mouth were, well, you can find anything to disprove anything on the internet. How do you argue with that? I keep thinking to myself, if social media hadn't existed, that we would have lived the rest of our lives so happily. It, it took a turn when Trump showed up. There's something about QAnon that hooks people and it's going worldwide. One thing that's very strange about being a QAnon spouse or in a QAnon family is that you you literally feel like you are watching a person who you used to know die in front of you because whoever they used to be whatever personality they used to have it doesn't exist anymore and you keep searching for that person who you've known for a really really long time and and eventually you just find that they aren't there and it really felt it felt like he died For some reason, my spouse started to become obsessed with secret societies. He started getting really into WikiLeaks, the DNC conspiracy theory, the Pizzagate conspiracy theory. That's when, that's when his personality started to change. My real red flag moment definitely revolved around his increasing anti-Semitism, which apparently is a very common Thing in people who are QAnon conspiracy theorists. My dad's side of the family is Jewish, so it was difficult for me. There's nothing wrong with my family. You know, there's nothing wrong with people being Jewish. I was hanging out with my son, and all of a sudden my son said something about Jews. And I was like, excuse me? Where did you hear this? And my four-year-old son said, from dad, in the car. I ran out to my car in my pajamas. I grabbed the SD card from the dash cam and I threw it into my computer and I started watching. And the first video, the first video I pulled up, the first video I pulled up was disgusting. He was listening to anti-Semitic podcasts with my babies in the car. I've left my marriage now and I've been out for almost two months really emotional to talk about because it's like your whole life ended like you had a real actual life together and they chose the internet over you i keep thinking to myself if social media hadn't existed that we would have lived the rest of our lives so happily if someone had told me five years ago that i would be getting a divorce because my husband believes in conspiracy theories and hates jews I never would have believed that. I did feel like I had lost my spouse to an addiction and it really felt like he died. I was truly living in a completely different reality than the person I was married to. I put a lot of effort into trying to make sure that Q just wouldn't come up. As it grew and grew, this conspiracy in his mind, it kind of took over everything. We had met in college. We were very outdoorsy. That was kind of our thing. We used to go backpacking and camping and hiking. We could always like make everything a little bit better and a little bit more comfortable. And (laughs) it, it was a lot of fun. That declined around the time we got into Q a little bit more interested in conspiracy theories than the average person. It it took a turn when Trump showed up. It wasn't that he was a Trump supporter or even a Republican, so it didn't really stem from his political affiliation at all. It really just kind of accelerated to a point where we were not living in the same reality anymore. We had a couple of times where Hugh had said that the world was coming to an end. Tonight's the night, it's happening right now. We have to pack up. You have to say goodbye to your family. The internet's gonna go down and then that's gonna be our signal from Q that, that the world is ending. And it was a very, just a very scary thing to live through. Somebody who has that much conviction that the world's going to end. It, 
9.55 that night, you kind of start to lose your own sense and your own confidence in what you believe to be true when you're just constantly being inundated by QAnon stuff. And you start to wonder if maybe you're the one who's not informed. Those moments were very scary. I can't say I was super confident that the world wasn't going to end, even though logically it wasn't. I think kind of what kept me staying is that it feels so deceptively and frustratingly easy to fix, especially once he started talking about flat earth, stuff like that. And there's kind of this sense of like, oh my God, I should be able to convince him that the earth is round. I can do this, right? It can be really hard to let go. He didn't understand it. He felt that I was ending something good over political disagreements. Once you get past debating, you know, just political preferences into debating what's real and what's not, it just becomes this really draining, really exhausting thing. He was mainstream knowledge now. My parents know what it is. They just asked me about it. Like, was, was that QAnon? Was that what he was into? So it kind of came late, this validation. This is the kind of thing that does break up relationships. This might be a tipping point for a lot of people's family members. I hope that there are some people who finally start to see a little bit more clearly now. If you're deciding to stay in a relationship on any level with somebody who believes in this stuff, you need to make sure you don't lose your own footing in the process, your own sense of what's real and what's not. Because you almost feel like you can fight it. And maybe you can. I couldn't. I first became aware of it in June or July. I noticed his disposition was angrier. I found QAnon merchandise, um, t-shirt and some bumper stickers on his desk. At the time, you know, I was only marginally familiar with it, but I told him, this is poison. This is fake stuff online. This is gonna, it's brainwashing. Don't even look at it. Don't touch it. Don't let it into our house. And of course, it fell on deaf ears. We used to enjoy lots of things. We both like all types of ethnic food. Eating out has always been a big part of our relationship. You know, movies, theater. I'm still a member of a chorus and he'd come to all my shows. We were just typical middle-class gay couple. You know, we just had fun. He was easy to talk to. He was loyal and he was just one of the most truly kind people I've ever met. 2016, he was wildly, wildly pro Bernie Sanders. I mean, he was one of the Bernie bros posted on Facebook about him all the time. And so when Bernie didn't win, he became absolutely hateful to Hillary Clinton. I remember one time after he had sent me some article and I had sent him something to debunk it and I pointed out, you know, I that took me five seconds of Google. You need to check these things that you're looking at. The exact words out of his mouth were, well, you can find anything to disprove anything on the internet. How do you argue with that? As the election got closer and closer, he started posting just absolutely hateful, horrible shit on Facebook. Um, my phone started blowing up with friends and family saying, what is going on? Has his account been hacked? If he had posted something like that when we were dating, it would have we would never be married. Uh, the day after the election, so this would have been the morning of November 4th, I left. I went to a hotel for two days. Um, and during that time, other than a few quick texts, we did not talk. And I told him then that I wanted a divorce, that it was too much. We had a confrontation, said a lot of things. He was crying. And by the end of it, I thought maybe this is salvageable. 
I said, you stopping the shit posting on Facebook would be a big step in the right direction. And he did do that. So I thought we were making progress. Then when I came home, I asked for counseling and he told me he would consider it in three months. That meant after the inauguration, when he, by then he thought the storm would have happened and I'd have to admit that he was right all along. So it was just totally disingenuous on his part, total manipulation. My thought and strategy was that I was going to take this reset period and if Biden could just get in office peacefully, then I was going to start deprogramming. But then after what happened on the 6th, uh, I'm, I spoke with the divorce attorney on Thursday. I'm not 100% decided, but it's too much. There's this shadow between us, this distance. These people aren't going away. You know, some of me thinks QAnon is, it is a mass hysteria, like the Salem witch trials or McCarthy's communist scares in the 50s. And all those things eventually blow themselves out. But we've never seen a mass hysteria that had the power of the internet behind it. I don't know how it's going to morph once Trump is finally out of office. I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't think it's going to be like a light bulb and it's just going to flick off and go away. There's something about QAnon that hooks people and it's going world.